Okay, so next up is we have a 57 year old lady, diabetic, hypertensive, chronic stable angina with normal LV. She had uh, significant LAD and CERC disease which we have already uh, stented. Uh, right now we are planning for RCA which has 80% mid distal lesion followed by to near total occlusion of uh, PLV. So, uh, I have punctured the left distal radial and you can see this is a star ball. You know, this is something which can become quite useful. You can see how comfortably the patient's arm has been kept in uh, pronation uh, without any sort of uh, uh, discomfort or anything. And I also don't have to stoop too much to work. So this is another small addition to the armamentarium and which keep, keeps uh, you know the arm so uh, comfortably uh, placed even with the left uh, radial. Because it is distal radial it is in a pronated position and then the, the particular device has some support over here which is uh, gi giving a support to the arm and patient is extremely comfortable. This so is, again, five in six is usual choice, particularly, uh, uh, you know, for me to avoid any major trauma in the vessel. Dr. Patel, yes. yes. Uh, is that support system is your original? No, 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 no. This is, uh, uh, you know, that we have the distributor over here. I it's see. basically a French company, I suppose. I see. Okay. This is not our original one. <laughs> I but I always a, like to. Start out with the French. Star, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's that's the right. The Terremo, I think, distributed. No, no. Uh, yeah. Here, here, the, 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 you know, we have different distribution, but in some part of the world, maybe in Bangladesh, Fazila, yes. So. But this, and I, I love to try all these new toys. Go to LAO. Scout. That's the, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a bubble now, yeah. Scout. Okay, I'm in. Okay, record. Go to AP cranial and we take a long shoot. Give one cc DLCM intravenous. Yeah. What do you think should be my wire? Malcolm, what do you think should be my wire? I and know your workhorse wire, so it's not fair to ask that question to me. But Pardon? I try. I know your workhorse wire, so <laughs> no, go to LAO. I, but I use the same thing, uh, Pilot 50. Pilot 50. Unfortunately, and there is a short, short okay. supply, transient short supply in the country. So I don't have one over here. Okay. I have Pilot 150, but I will, I will avoid it. Yeah, uh, that's a little bit uh, so too my, aggressive uh, to start. Uh, I, my strategy will be. Because uh, this is the situation, I will use fine cross and uh, extra floppy run through. Malcolm, what, 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 is, what, what is your suggestion? Just give me fine cross and well, extra floppy. Well, again, I think you, you know, you've made the point a few times today. You use the wire that you're most comfortable with. Yeah. So, I mean, we have a, uh, you know, so an increasing number of uh, CTO uh, caliber wires. And I, I think you, know, you start off with, I think the most important thing is that you're going to have a microcatheter down there so you can make it easily exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Small bag. First class. Microcatheter, just load it. Uh, there is a possibility that we might have to do a major reconstruction in the distal part because from the left you can see the right flowing well. So I think that posterior lateral branch seems pretty sizable yeah, yeah, with a, a very huge good flow. branch. It's a huge branch. Uh, just here, uh, even having guide shot from the left side on the screen will help uh, if you don't have a dual. Backlog. You have the second 
catheter in other I, side or not? By and large, I try to avoid that because one thing, it is cumbersome to the operator. Number two, it is cumbersome to the patient. And when you have two catheters together, there are good chances of air embolism or other problems, you know, some or other person making mistake. So I will be, and because, because the nipple is very good over there, mm -hmm. so I will trust, you know, going only anti-grade. So, I know, but if you, yeah. if you inject yeah. from the left side and identify that collaterals in certain angles uh, that is going to work, yeah, then at least you know the road map. Way, but uh, the thing is, if you are going to go in, you are going to go in. <laughs> Yes. We do. Hello. I don't think we need to introduce it here. Oh, yeah. Kintur, what do you think? I think we should uh, be good with this support. Once we go through the tortuous segment, the run through will cross through the lesion. Scout. I guess Russell was still talking about wires. Yeah, I guess the last wire I thought that uh, we were going to hear about crossing a CTO was a high torque floppy. Okay. Want to bring the fine cross in? Holding the wire. Okay. A little bit more through that band, then we'll. We should have okay. a better support. Inject. AP cranial. And the AP cranial, I think, yeah, that's that's a good view. So, Dr. Patel, the uh, certainly my CTO uh, friends will sort of emphasize that okay. you, you, I mean, this looks as though this is potentially you're very doable, but to really have a strategy of what your escalation is going to be. So, if you could not, could, cannot cross this anti-grade, do you have any intention of trying a retrograde approach for this uh, no, posterior no, lateral? No, I will try, Just a I will try with a stiff wire to cross it. Mm -hmm. Do we have filter here? No. Filter, I am not, comp you know, I have not used, you so I will not through. use. Scout, I am, I am progressing. I think we are already through, through the... The other wires, which uh, we, we've used a lot of the XT yeah. wires. I am through. Is, also with... There we are. And that's with the high torque Inject. floppy? This one? Yeah. This, uh, this wire is a run through extra floppy. Oh, extra floppy. Record. Okay. My I wire position is not good. It is in a small branch. That's what uh, after I feel. the crossing of the occlusion. This is good. Mm -hmm. This looks better, not good. There is no Still PVC not there. good. Maybe. Let me go in. Uh, just hold it properly. Okay. I think we can dial it. Oh no, no. Okay. Guide has come out right at that point. I think so I think it would be helpful. The fine cross really helped the run through wire, right? I think right? so. And Absolutely. that's the beauty of a fine cross catheter. The thing so. is we can take a view and then I will remove fine cross. We don't yeah. have a, you know, a exchange length wire. So I will have to use a hydraulic technique to remove it. Record. It's hey, open. Sorry, sorry. Open. Yeah. Sorry. Dry goss. Wire came out. That's it. But still. This is perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. Record. I think that looks really good. Now, go to LAO. Get me a syringe filled with saline. So, Tejas, before, I was just going to ask, uh, before yeah. you took the, uh, the fine cross out, and maybe I missed it, uh, but did you make any attempt to uh, to follow the wire all the way out to make a little bit of a passage? Uh, I will use balloon, uh, Malcolm, now. Okay. I think I'll use balloon. I'm just coming out slowly. Uh, I suspect it. Now, yeah. give me syringe. Uh, Kintur, you come and hold there. Hold and, the uh, yeah, hold the guide. 
go on that side okay. I, I just to show this to the young guys who don't know this hydraulic Yes, okay. yes, lovely. Okay, I have the two he open. You have the two he open? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. I am pushing this and pulling this back. Out? Not yet. Out? I have the wire. Oh, wire is out. <laughs> no problem. Just give me now. Think there is some little bit of coordination issue but that's fine no problem well i have to put the cross fine cross catheter back in maybe uh, now i will cross it just like that because we have already dented it with fine cross okay remove this give it always helps if you have extra long arms doing this but i think that yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the points i think you would want to make though is that that it's more about yeah, the injection rather than the pulling back that's of the right. catheter yep so 20 cc syringe would probably make it more likely scout to there would be because now there is a space there to enter in so i'm so sure it will go it is going now go to epicranial i knew that i have created some dent with fine cross scout i think we are fine we are fine huh yeah that looks Good. like the major pw yeah. branch now give me emerge two millimeter emerge emerge boston 215. Uh, any comment, Malcolm? No, uh, look, I think we can see what you're going to do, but uh, you know, one of the questions which always comes up uh, with uh, new operators and even experienced operators is if you can't see the distal vessel. And I, right. I, you know, I, I think you're confident, I think I agree with you that the wire is in the vessel. But maybe uh, some of the panelists could just uh, make some comments about uh, how they approach these lesions in terms of being sure that you're actually in the vessel. Do you, is there a danger in uh, dilating? Do you want to inject some contrast down there or through a microcatheter? Um, just be interested to hear what uh, people's opinions would be. I think, you know, uh, doddering with the fine cross is the most I would do and then the next thing I would balloon like you guys are doing. Uh, injecting through the microcatheter, uh, if the tip is uh, at the small branch and you get extra vision, the, the psychological effects of that are much worse. I think uh, what he demonstrated actually went through the side branch and then he went to another branch. Once wire goes and moves that way, you know it. It's, it's a tough lesion, huh? It's, it's so, going, but... So I would not worry about it actually yeah. because okay. that's Start what dialing. I feel like. You know, go in the side branches. Six, and so if it goes easily with movement, uh, then you know it's in true lumen. I'm not used to this. Uh, Wait, just a moment. Radni, can you help? I guess one okay, other comment uh, would be that, of course, if you do have dual injections, you, you may Six, be able to see that the, the, the eight, wire is there. Down. Go up, six. So tell you what, what, what balloon is this? This is Emerge, Boston. What, what size? Is it? Two by 15. Two by 15. See, okay. come down. Why I didn't use 1.5 or maybe 1.25 despite this? Because the artery is good for deep intubation. If I can't go, I can deep intubate and fix it. But I think for, you know, a new operator, they should use the lowest profile. Go here also. Six. Six. Now record. Once I do this, I'll I like to give a pass just to check it whether it goes in smoothly or not. It goes in very smoothly. Yeah. Let's check it out now. Okay. I have to go in the upper branch, or this is okay. This looks okay. I, this is good. It looks okay. This looks okay. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, that's the key. The Go to LAO cranial. Yeah. We have to see the bifurcation. Yeah, and it may be that that more proximal lesion is the, is the key here. Get that open and we may be able to see And I not tell you, sometimes because the artery is occluded, it loses its stone and it looks small. Once you stent it and give nitro, the whole thing starts looking big. Let us see. Record. <sighs> Anyways. Uh, or else I can go to PLV and... Uh, 
I think this is great. This, this PDA is position yeah. is perfect. We can stand it just proximal to the bifurcation. Yeah. I think PDA is not perfusing because the collaterals are better to the PDA. And it's also just one of the posterior lateral branches. It's a small uh, branch, but although it's interesting, you talk about the fact that they lose the tone, but uh, many CTO specialists will yeah, uh, long love that to show you at the end of the case how more. big the vessel really was. Scout. And they've really made it no, uh, much it, bigger so. than you could imagine. Scout. Go. Fifth so I think we all agree that this really is the critical lesion. Come down. Little proximal. Okay. Go up again. I am following Rajini's advice. I always like to follow. Go on 15. <laughs> Come down. Rajini. You know, he is, uh, you know, uh, a very talented uh, intensivist and anesthetist with me, who is with me since 15 years. And, uh, you know, I can definitely certify that he is better than many angioplasters in this country. <laughs> Record. He's too good with his hands. Lovely. So you can see and, the PDA. But I think that's a great better. example, don't you think, Tejas, that you have not done anything to that lower branch that's at right. all? Absolutely. And now look at the size of it, it and it was simply clean. because you opened up that more proximal lesion. And I think it would be wrong to have been tempted to, to try to uh, right. put a balloon there. So yep. we will put the distal end of the stand before bifurcation, just before the right? Bifurcation. Yep. Yeah, just at the yeah. crux. The size. Now there is a lot of step down. Is it the disease or is it the tapering of the artery? Mm -hmm. I am not sure. Uh, I think it's also under perfuse, right? But 2.5 or 2.75? 2.5. We can make it bigger. So let's uh, hear any uh, further 18. comments from uh, the panel. Uh, you, you've been a little quiet here for a few minutes Just here. Uh, anything to, to add at this point? Previous maybe in terms of uh, strategy, but particularly maybe stent size? 2.5 seems reasonable. Yeah. Length, 28? 28, I think, yeah. I 28. It's, it's long. Uh, yeah. Get me 23? I, I 28. Think 28 would be probably a little bit longer, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, 28. 2.5 by 28, give me Ultimaster. Ultimaster is a Terumo stand. Uh, nice stand. Okay. Give me Ultimaster. Maybe we can size the mid lesion with that balloon at the end. We want to put a stand. Ah, we will dilate stand. it with 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> and there you will require a bigger stand, yep. a bigger diameter. What I do, I won't suggest in this to pull back wire, but uh, normally I would just put that platinum tip wire in the lesion and measure it. Because that's 30 millimeter. Uh, here I don't do that. <laughs> here you don't do it because you don't want to come back. But normally that's how I, if I want to do primary yes. stand, that's what we will do. I think balloon sizing is most. But I think Dr. Patel could uncross this wire uh, lesion a number of times. He's just going to put it straight back there just like he did before. the balloon at that place. So, fifteen balloon, that will give a good idea proximal and distal how much is it. Can you speak a little loudly? I am not able uh, to. Could you use the microphone? Could he yeah. use the Now microphone? I can hear very clearly. I think microphone. May, may I know who is talking? Uh, I am Professor Yashpal. Uh, so yeah, Yashpal, how are you? Oh, fine. Uh, I am just telling a very simple balloon sizing of the lesion. Yeah. Just uh, when you are doing NGO, just keep a balloon there and take an NGO. So that with that exact size of the stent can be there. Even one millimeter can't be missed at all. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I, I agree. I completely agree. There's the earlier comment that fine cross, but any catheter or balloon, if you bring it close to your wire tip, your wire steering and the penetration force increases in a logarithmic scale. So for all CTO operators, we use that technique all the time. Yeah, but actually what I feel is, you know, with fine cross, the wire is always flexible. But with a balloon, there's always a well, chance that you might want, yeah. make the wire a bit stiff and it can easily go into the subintima. So with the fine cross, your wire retains its flexibility. But with a balloon to good? support you, you that yeah, sometimes does more? not Slightly happen. Slightly more. I think we should go a couple of millimeters more. Further. I think mm -hmm. we should cross the crux. There seems to be austere PD. Okay. Just see. Even if oh, this looks, looks good, good. Huh? go, yeah. go, go. I hope I am not 
compelled to work in the PLV. <laughs> no, I think we should be okay. 10, 12, come down, come down. We, I'll pull back and give a little high pressure, a little bit back. Yeah, go. 14, 15, come down. Now, before I bring the balloon back, I'll dilate the middle one and measure the length also. Here, record. This looks good. Looks good? Uh, well, go, go here. 10. Uh, Malcolm, what do you think? This looks... Well, I think it's an intermediate uh, severity lesion. I was just about to ask whether or not uh, IFR, FFR <laughs> might be... Uh, <laughs> but will you be comfortable leaving it like this? Well, you know, if you had normal flow, normal IFR, FFR, that's, a, that's the question, isn't it? And obviously, uh, we, we've already declared what we're going to do here. Um, so it's then, I think, very reasonable just maybe to ask the panelists, uh, is this something that Samir, you know, should be what, what treated? Yes, yeah, Samir. I, I think, you know, I would fix it because you have a raw area distally with the new stent. And so I wouldn't be reassured by the usual metrics. Yes, Paul, what do you think? <laughs> Yes, Paul. What do you? What is your opinion? I think 26, 20 something stand will be okay. Okay, record. Check yeah, it. if you if you want to fix it, I would do IVAS. Otherwise, don't want to fix it. Do FFR. <laughs> <laughs> but Samir, go just go back to your comment about your know, new stent and leaving what might be a 50 percent uh, lesion. I mean, that's really from the old stent literature. Do we, do we still really think that that's a, a problem? That that's a, a predictor of uh, stent thrombosis? That's too far. Three, three. You know, three by 33, 32, Ultimaster. In the very old data from Colombo, you know, pre and post stent lesions were considered predictors. Yeah. But I mean, th those are really old data, though, aren't they? I mean, they are. Uh, Old bare metal stents, uh, maybe first generation drug looting stents, but certainly you know bare metal stents. We know they have a higher rate of stent thrombosis. Um, even Colombo in those days may not have been doing really high pressure inflations. We you were know, looking w w uh, for the lesions that uh, those data pertain to. Uh, although I'm not sure about that. True. No, anyway, I think it's an interesting question, and uh, obviously there was a low threshold for, for stenting this, and I can understand why. I think that's the beauty of international cardiology. Every time we have data, we have Kya it's already hai? outdated. Dard, put him. Okay, okay, relax. And so what is there? We have new equipment and uncertainties. Five minutes, huh? Patient is not able to sleep because she has uh, some spine problem. Chalo. Then so what is there? Ah. Yes, what is it? I guess getting back to the question of IFR or FFR here, you know, one question about FFR here is you've just opened up a CTO and is the distal bed, you're clearly at this point able to uh, you know, perform, mm, sort of have, have normal really? hyperemia. It may be that we underestimate this with FFR. It, it may be that IFR would be a, a better uh, a test here. Scout. Looks good, go up quickly. Go up. 15. What size diameter stent? 3 by 33. Yes. Ultimaster, 15, mm -hmm. come down. Tejan, you are right. This 3 looks like 3.5. Yep. Come down. We'll down. deflate. Let us, let us wait for some time. Go up again. We were talking actually just before we came here that artery looks big here. Whether uh, magnification down. is different or... Maybe it's a II that is too high compared to what we now are this used This is a to. big screen, Tejan, that is the thing, you know. And if yeah, you know, work on this screen, this, you this don't like to work on small distance, screen. If it is a little bit more, 
he has a tendency actually to da sure. make that artery look bigger compared to if it is very close to the body. So you guys want me to do OCT? I think it will be interesting to see the okay. mid stent. The, okay. the mid stent I would be yeah. interested. You might see some red in the mid stent. Let us check it with OCT. I think, Ross, we uh, have uh, yeah, Atas Kar in the uh, audience here. I think we uh, should take mean? advantage of his expertise. I think we're learning a lot today. So, uh, uh, prepare the OCT catheter. Fire bar. I think if in this machine stand boost is there, then stand boost can be applied. It's a branch. Uh, uh, it has something, uh, some other name. Uh, for uh, these image guided system, uh, but yes, Paul, we don't. Uh, you know, we hardly, we have hardly used it. Somehow, I don't know why. Okay. I think we are there. Yeah. Fazila, any comment? It's a great case done by a great master. Oh. So we'll wait to see the O C T, right? Yeah. This is a very, you know, delicate catheter. It's a very short, uh, yes. uh, yeah. short rapid exchange area. system, yeah. so it is very prone to kink. There was one uh, modified cutting balloon, Samir, uh, which was bought by Abbott and which was discontinued, you know, uh, yeah. which had this type of rapid exchange. That is true. That was called the FX mini rail. Yes, FX mini rail. It was very easy to push anywhere. Yeah, it was very trackable, but yeah. uh, only made one scoring line. That's right. Theoretically, mm -hmm. you could rotate, but yeah. it, it always fell in the same groove. Uh, let us give you one second. Let us give you more slack. Okay, good. Mm, and a comfortable ragjo. Okay. Anand Shukla is not speaking anything. Is he there? Sir. Anand? Yes. Uh, yes, that yes, sir. Uh, Not Anand uh, Peter, Anand Shukla. <laughs> okay. So, if we want to do the. You come in the front. All right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we will see distal stent only here. Right? But it has come out. Just pakar those two. Okay. No, no, no. One second, it has come out. Wait. Agar lai thodu. Bas. Okay. Chalo. Only see the distal stent here. Go. Distal and then proximal, maybe two runs we have to take. It may be a little difficult to see all of the distal stent anyway. Uh, it's got quite a long uh, distance there. Press, start, press, Prabhak. Okay, good. Oh, yes, we covered everything. Okay. Now, Professor Akasaka will yes. give the commentary. Yeah, this is uh, the distal portion. Uh, the, here is an uh, after uh, bifurcation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a position is very good. But some disease in the, in the distal uh, after, That's right. after bifurcation. But anyway, uh, the stent position is very wonderful. The symmetricity is not enough, but it might be acceptable. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, very fibrous uh, plaque there. That's right. right. And this is very normal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Some uh, yeah, incomplete operation, but it might be less than uh, 200 micron in okay. my uh, eyeball judgment. I'm not sure. <laughs> Can you show that white and red bar? Uh, we, we have to still see this proximal stand. Yeah. If you continue. Yeah, to play it looks that. white. Completely. Yeah, looks white. Yeah, very good. It looks white. It so you think it is okay? Yeah, it's okay. So just show the colonoscopy view now. Uh, <laughs> you know, in USA, 
before we give them any sedation, there is a classification we have to tell Malam Party yeah, 1, 2, over 3. Here also we use and I, te uh, we, I tell them that I see the colon through it, you know. So it's <laughs> through the mouth I see colon. That's good. <laughs> Looks really good. There are no red uh, things anywhere. It's in the proximal side. I think the, side. the disease burden in the distal RCA was tremendous and uh, still the lumen expansion is very good. Distally. So, Professor Akasaka, I have a question to yes, you. Yes, yes, please. Uh, how important is it to have a proper circle uh, surrounding the stent? Because many times you have a lot of fibrous tissue or a lot of calcium yes. and then you see the distortion. And at what level of... Uh, uh, under expansion you live with heavy calcium because we have st badly stuck with one very heavily calcified long cal segment of calcium we did everything but there were a lot of red spots in the white spot in between so when do you live comfortably go okay this is fine and I will uh, I will be okay with this yeah uh, the symmetricity is the one of the yeah, index to identify the result of uh, uh, stent implantation However, if there are thick calcium, eccentric thick calcium, uh, at that time it might be very difficult to get the symmetricity completely. So it, it depends on the condition. In this case, generally speaking, we can expect a very symmetric uh, dilatation. However, some place shows uh, the, the very eccentric fibrous plaque. At, at, that, at the portion, uh, the, uh, the stand dilate the opposite portion of the plaque. So it, it might be very difficult to get a complete symmetricity. Okay. Okay. okay, I understand. So this looks good. good. Maybe, maybe take an epicranial view to, to uh, go to the other lab where Sanjay should be ready for robotic LED. Yeah, it's a huge artery. It's a huge artery. It's a huge artery. You want to give nitro and see how yes. big it becomes or it's okay? I think if you want to prove it, it's already proven it's a big artery. It's okay. So, it's okay. I mean, you can I give nitro, really but good. I don't think you, you, you're going to do anything else that's, after that. that. That's perfectly all right. So in that case, I, will, I think I will stop over here. Thank yep. you. So we will be going to the next lab yep. for robotics. Moti Undo Swaslo. Bas, 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 bas. That's it. Perfect, perfect, perfect.